Well, hello guys. Oh man, what a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day outside. Nice and cool this morning, really beautiful day. Guys, I'm over at the cabin. I wanted to take this opportunity to, uh, I told y'all I would do a video on um, a passage in Psalms, and I wanted to take this opportunity to do this. Uh, trying to get a lot of videos shot pretty quick because I got a lot to do this week. And I'm uh, trying to get keep my word and get uh, as many videos out as I can uh, that I had told people that I would try to do. Now the passage today I want to read from, it's a very short passage in the Bible in Psalms, uh, but it's actually one that while I was in the Messianic uh, uh, group that I was in, that um, was used quite often and taught on quite often. And I really come to, oh, I could almost quote it for a long time, I knew it word for word, but it, I haven't I haven't stayed in it reading it continually because it's always in my mind. And I really couldn't quote it word for word uh, like I used to. But the passage is found in Psalms 128. It is a very no, well-known passage. Uh, now I think it's a passage that really fits the time that we live in now. With everything going on in the world around us right now, I think this is probably one of the better passages in Psalms that we can read. Now, I mean, I, uh, Psalms 119 is one of my favorite ones too. Psalms 91. You know, Psalm 119 is a whole uh, Hebrew alphabet. If you know how to read it, it's there. The whole Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet is in Psalm 119. And, uh, but this particular passage here I want to read, and I want to talk about it. And I don't have my glasses on today, and I'm using my Names of God Bible. I got like, like I told you, I got like 20 something different Bibles. And uh, I, uh, I picked this particular one because this is the one I used to have memorized. Because I just liked the way that it read better. And it didn't take any deity or anything away from the Word or anything like that. It didn't add anything. Uh, I just don't care for the modern versions and how they word it. Now, this says the same thing, but I like the words that's used in the proper, I mean, not the proper names, but the names of God Bible that I have here. And I'm going to begin reading in Psalm 128. Now, the writing is kind of tiny in this Bible, so it may, it may take me a minute to focus, get my eyes focused on it. But uh, uh, this is a song uh, for going up to worship that David did. This is called a song of, of ascents. When David was going up to worship, this was a song. And we have to understand that. Now, blessed are all who fear Yahweh and live his ways. Guys, that right there, I love the way it starts off. Blessed are those who love Yahweh. Now, Yahweh is a Hebrew word for God. Or you'd hey, Bob, hey, however you want to say it. But blessed are those who I mean, I just love it. Blessed are those who fear Yahweh. The problem today is we don't fear God. We look at him as, oh, the man upstairs, or what. Well, we use those irreverent terms when we speak of God. Now, this is God. This is not Christ. This is God himself that's, um, that David is talking about here. Blessed are all who fear Yahweh and live in his way. What is Yahweh's way? Yahweh's way is to be upright, to be righteous. That's what Yahweh's way is. The Lord in Samuel says that it's better to be obedient than it is to sacrifice. That's pretty profound in the Old Testament. But that's exactly what the way that Yahweh looks at it. It's better to be obedient to him than it is to say, oh, I sacrificed this. You know, he's not interested in sacrifices. He's interested in your obedience to him. Now, uh, this next verse, I love it in the, in, in the names of God Bible. I love the way it reads. You will certainly eat what your hands have provided Blessings to you. May things go well for you. I love that. Your hands will eat. Get this. Your hands will, I mean, your, 
You will certainly eat what your hands have provided. Guys, that's growing your own food. That's the homesteading way. That's the self-sufficient way. You will eat what your hands have produced. I love that. I love how the word or the word there tells me you'll eat what your hands have provided. He didn't say you'll run down to the grocery store. He didn't say you'd go to the farmer's market. He said you'll eat what 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 these right here have produced. He's telling us, grow your own food. Not go out and buy it. Grow it. And then what does what he say after that? Blessings to you for doing that. For doing that, you'll be blessed. How will you be blessed? Okay, let's look at it. We all know that food from the grocery store is garbage. It's like eating cardboard. It's been irradiated. When you eat it, it causes you to have to take the little purple pill because it has no living enzymes in it. The radiation they put through all the food kills all the living enzymes. And then your stomach has to create all these acids to digest this food because there's no acids in it naturally to digest it. And then you get indigestion, you get GERD, you get all these kind of things, acid reflux, and you go to the doctor and he says, oh, here, you got to take this little purple pill. that will take care of it. The little purple pill is nothing more than stomach acid to help you digest your food for a 24-hour period and it goes away. And then you got to take another one because you don't eat any good food to put in your system in order for your stomach to digest it. You don't have anything alive in your stomach. It's all dead. It's just a filler. God says, if you eat what your hands have produced, it doesn't have that irradiation ran through it. It's not void of all the living enzymes. It's good. And you'll be blessed. Doesn't that just bless your heart? It does mine. It gives me the zeal and the drive to get out and to grow my own food. Then, what does it say? <laughs> May things go well for you. You know what that means? You'll have good health. You know why our health is so bad today? I'm going to tell you. We've not obeyed that verse right there. We buy our food from grocery stores. It's had tons of chemicals. You, gotta, you pick up anything in the grocery store, in the fresh produce aisle, what's on it? It has a PLU code on it. You know what that PLU code tells you? Look at how it's worded. Look at the numbers on it. Go look it up on the internet if you don't believe me. Look at how the numbers are on it. If specific numbers is on that POU code, it means it's laden with chemicals. It was raised using tons of chemicals. And then if it has code numbers that started with, is it the number seven or something like that in it? Then it was raised organically. And guys, when we eat from the grocery store, we're eating foods that are loaded with chemicals. And you can take them home and you can put vinegar on them and you can wash them and you can do all you want to do. It's not going to take it off of it. I don't care what they tell you. You cannot wash chemicals off of food. Some foods we're buying is genetically modified. They have genes spliced into them. And you, you eat that. That junk goes into your body. Those unnatural genes go into your indi digestive tract. And they mutate for the next two weeks in your intestinal tract, causing all kind of stomach and gut disorders and stuff like that, which leads to mental disorders, and you're polluting your body. And God says it won't be well with you if you do this. But if you raise what food with your own hands, it'll be well with you. You'll be blessed. I mean, that's, that is a great way to start a passage off as far as I'm concerned. But you know, if you follow those first two verses right there, I want us to look at the, the next verses. Then it tells you what the repercussions will be for being obedient. Okay? Let's look at it here. If I can get my eyes focused here. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine inside your home. Your children will be like young olive trees around you your table. How precious is that? If you do just these two things, your wife will be like a fruitful vine on the inner I'm going to tell you, this is another version that you can read from because I have several different versions memorized. 
Your, your wife will be like a fruitful vine planted on the innermost parts of your house. Your children will be like shoots of an olive branch round about the table. In other words, your family will be blessed. Your wife will be fruitful. Your children will be a blessing to you. So many of us have children that are curses to us. They were like, they go off into left field and they just go out and do all these hideous things. They're rebellious. They're ungodly. They're all these things. And God, God said, that's because we didn't obey the first two verses. If we would just obey the first two verses, our wives would be like a fruitful vine on the innermost parts of our house. In other words, she's productive. She's just great. It's like I, like I always say about Wanda. Wanda's the greatest blessing that ever happened to me in my life. This woman is so fruitful. And not only does it mean that, it means that she will bear you children. And then what does it say about the children? They'll be like shoots from an olive branch round about the table. They'll be like little olive trees. They'll be a blessing to you. I mean, are we getting the picture yet? I mean, it's amazing how this one little passage here has so much to say for the homesteading lifestyle and for the self-sufficient lifestyle. Now, look at what the, uh, the next verse. This is how Yahweh will bless the person who fears him. What did we just read? Your wife will be like fruitful, like a fruitful vine around the innermost parts of the house. Your children will be like olive shoots around about the table. And, it, and what does it say? This is how Yahweh will bless you. Good health. Because you raise your own food. You'll have clarity. Your body will be a great. You'll, you'll physically be good. And then your wife will be great. Your kids will be great. You'll have a great family around about you. Is that not what... What it's all about is to have a good family, a healthy family. It says, this is how Yahweh will bless you. And then, may Yahweh bless you from Sion. Guys, you got to understand the period of time in which this was written. Um, now let me finish reading the passage. May Yahweh bless you from Zion so that you may see Jerusalem or Yerushalayim because it's a, uh, it's a, it's a proper name in the Bible actually. Um, so that you may see Yerushalayim prospering. Now this was written to the Jews but we as Gentiles can really take note of this. The Lord says, I will bless you out of your own nation so that your nation may prosper. He wants to bless us from our country. He wants to bless us from our nation. But guys, here in America, we've turned all this around. Our country doesn't bless Yahweh anymore. It doesn't even give him credit for anything. All it does is takes everything away. And they turn their back upon him, and they shake their fist in his face, and they do ungodly things all the time. And... Then the curses of Deuteronomy fall upon us. And then we become a cursed nation rather than a blessed nation. And this particular passage right here, it's, it says that Yahweh <laughs> will bless you from Zion. In other words, your the Lord God will permit your country to be a blessing to you. And here in America, we've had the blessings upon us for quite some time now. We've been able to live in freedom. Our country has been very productive. It has prospered. People could own land. Uh, they could. Uh, they 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 could have houses. They could have. They could have any. You could live the American dream. But now that we've turned our back upon Yahweh, well, the bottom line is he's turned his back upon this nation. And now. These blessings are no longer available to us. Our children will not have the same blessings that we had. They'll not be able to go out and buy land like we could or live the American dream like we did. But they will live in a cursed nation. And that's kind of sobering. But right here, Yahweh gave us a plan that would work if we had just paid attention. Now let's finish that verse out. Let's just reread that verse and we'll finish it out. May Yahweh bless you from Sion 
so that you may see Jerusalem prospering all the days of your life. Guys, all the days of your life. What better promise could you have than if you keep what we just read, you would be blessed your whole entire life. To me, that is so precious. And it means so much to know that the Lord loves us that much. That he's willing to do those things for us if we only obey and do what he said to do. To finish that out, this right here is something that strikes home with me more than anything else in the whole passage, I guess. May you live to see your children's children. I had a wife that passed away that she wanted nothing in the world more than to live to see her children's children. And it just didn't happen. Cancer took her away. She never got to live what she wanted to live. And guys, it's not just her. There's a lot of you on our, our YouTube channel here that's lost your spouses, that's lost your loved ones at a very young age, that never got to see their children's children. I've been blessed. Wanda's been blessed. We are able to see our children's children. And we're able to enjoy them. I mean, Miss Wanda had her family here this week. Uh, they came out, the kids fished in the pond, they caught fish, they carried them home to eat, and they enjoyed riding the rangers. I mean, they, they, they took home produce from the farm that we had here, things like this. That's what the Lord is talking about. If we're obedient to Him, we will live to see our children's children. That's a promise. This particular passage has a great promise in it. And the last part of that is, let there be peace in Israel. Now, like we talked about a while ago, this was wrote to the Jews, and that's why it says Israel. But when we make application to us, what we can say is, may there be peace wherever we live. For me, it's in America. For you, it may be in, in Europe. It may be in Germany. It may be in Canada. It may be in South America. You know, it, it may be in Mexico. I don't know. But you can make application to it if you're obedient to God. Instead of putting Israel there, you can say, let there be peace in whatever your home country is. Because, guys, that alone is where true happiness comes from is from Yahweh in the Lord joy does not come from owning things or having things joy comes from the Lord and when we understand that and we're obedient to his commands and we're obedient and do the things that he says to do then we will be fruitful our wives will be fruitful like the innermost parts of vines on the innermost parts of the house our children will be like shoots from an olive branch you will be blessed out of Zion. You will live to see your children's children. Guys, these are all promises from God. If we do, verse number one. Now, if you have to go back and look at it, go back and look at it. But what, what does it say in verse number one? Blessed are all who fear Yahweh. The beginning of wisdom and the beginning of knowledge is the fear of the Lord. Scripture plainly tells us, do not fear man. Man can destroy the body, but we're to fear God, who can destroy both the body and the soul. Guys, I hope that today, Psalm 128, has been a blessing to you. Because when I'm feeling down, and I'm feeling like, I just don't know if I want to get out here and fight this garden like I need to. I just don't know, Lord. Is it worth it? And I go pick up my Bible, whichever version of it I pick up. 
and I read Psalm 128, it gives me that little fire that I need to be able to get out there and to get it done because I know I'm going to be blessed. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.